I get asked over and over again every day, what ECU should I go with? I got to a point where I sort of needed to make a decision on what I wanted to choose to use more often than not. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why I made the decision that I made. <laughs> My intention here isn't to persuade you into buying Holly products. I think the best ECU for you is gonna be whichever one you have the most support for. Whoever you plan on using to purchase your system and do your tuning or help guide you through whatever problems you might have if you're doing an install or tuning by yourself, then that's gonna be the best bet for you as long as the system is gonna meet all your requirements as far as what you need it to do. With that being said, every one of these ECUs does the same thing. They all fire a fuel injector, they all fire a coil or coils and make the engine run. The big difference in price, you know, this is a $300 system and this is a multi-thousand dollar system, is all of the other things that it can do. An iPhone and a phone booth technically do the same thing. A 92 Hyundai Sonata and a Ferrari F40 do the same thing. Uh, it's how they do it and all of the additional things that they can do outside of the basics of what they're supposed to do that dictate the price. With that being said, there is a massive difference in hardware as well. If you simply pick up a Terminator X and then you pick up a Dominator, even if everything else was equal to the same, you can physically feel the difference in quality, hence a steeper price tag for the Dominator. There's obviously far more options on the market than just what you see pictured up here, but this is what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's just people inquiring through email, phone calls, or cars coming through to actually be tuned. This is the bulk of it, so this is what I'm gonna go through. So right off the bat, I don't think anybody has really purchased one of these systems new since the 99 in the 2000. So to simplify things, we'll just get rid of this. We'll start with MoTeC and we'll probably circle back to this a few times. Uh, MoTeC is king dingling, you can't really argue that. You've probably heard at some point in time that almost all of these have made some sort of a reference to, you know, this is the same as this, but cheaper. Kind of like injector dynamics injectors. Everyone's like, our injectors are the same as injector dynamics, but cheaper. Uh, at that point, you're admitting defeat and you're ultimately saying that this is the best. I have personally owned some MoTeC stuff and I've had very, very good experiences with it. I really like it, but uh, there are a few drawbacks. Now, surprisingly, MoTeC isn't nearly as expensive as everybody makes it out to be. Yes, it's far more expensive than some of the other options, but what you get for what you pay, it's really not that bad. But one of the biggest problems with the MoTeC stuff is sort of treated like you need an engine harness that's three times more expensive than the ECU. You know, these are drag cars, and yes, the wiring stuff needs to be nice, but it doesn't need to be able to survive a nuclear holocaust, and uh, it's not an airplane, it's not a helicopter. Now, I'm all for doing things really nice, but the harness steers a lot of people away from using a really good ECU. So I think if there was some more affordable ECU options, then this would probably be a better option for a lot of people. So my biggest complaint with the MoTeC stuff is the custom firmware. So you get a price for an ECU and it's really attractive and then you find out it doesn't include firmware so you have to choose firmware to purchase. So basically what that means is that three different people can have the exact same ECU but the functionality of the ECU is gonna be completely different. If you're capable of writing your own firmware, then this is the only option. This is the only thing I would consider. Unfortunately, I'm not anywhere remotely close to smart enough to do that, so it actually becomes very off-putting. Let me explain. All right, go through, find one of the big MoTeC tuners. Basically, all of them offer their own version of firmware. Generally, what that means is that everyone else's version of the firmware sucks, depending on who you're talking to. So you find your tuner, you guys do whatever it is that you do. For some reason, you have a falling out, now you wanna use a different tuner. Guess what? Now this guy is gonna want you to use his firmware, so now you're gonna to have to basically buy firmware package again that's potentially the same price as the ECU. Who knows, maybe you're the problem, you're the reason you're having falling out, so now you need to go to guy number three. Next thing you know, you're gonna have, Lord only knows how many thousands of dollars tied up just into firmware. Or, if you're like me and you plan on doing the tuning yourself, now you have to buy an ECU, you have to make that decision, and then you have all of these different options of firmware. So I believe there's a couple of different versions of uh, universal firmware that you can buy from MoTeC, one of which I don't think anybody uses, and then the other one theoretically should have everything that you need to do, but if you talk to anybody that does their own firmware, then they'll tell you that that's not enough and you need to buy you know, theirs or at least somebody else's. So now, how much time are you gonna have to put into trying to figure out whose firmware you wanna use? I'd rather just be able to buy an ECU and know that I'm gonna get 
the best that the ECU can do and not have to just hope I find some you know, random guy on Facebook that offers a firmware package that's gonna make the ECU work better than you know, the stuff that I can buy directly from the manufacturer. With that being said, I still totally would use Motec uh, in personal project, but I do uh, not really care for that aspect of it so much. Now all the firmware stuff is for the new M1 Motec. Uh, if you go, you know, a few years back and you go into the 100 series ECUs, which were referred to as the gold boxes, those do not have custom firmware. So when you buy an M800 ECU, you get what you get. What is kind of ironic and funny about that is this is the top of the totem pole here. They would, their box was referred to the gold box. Uh, now if we come all the way down here, they have a gold box and refer to it as a gold box. So. I don't know, I just find that really funny. So if we come up here to Cyvex and Life Racing, a lot of people probably haven't even heard of these two. Cyvex is basically the plug and play option for Life Racing. Life Racing is you know, more universal and this is gonna have some different plug and play options. I think they would have like RS3, some Lamborghini stuff, some GTR stuff, some, it's all high-end stuff. It's not quite as popular as Motec. Everybody that uses these two, you know, go back and forth and butt heads and try to say which one's better or whatever. But I do think Motec is more popular. It's more widely known but these are actually very quality ECUs as well. I actually purchased a Life Racing ECU for myself that uh, after having it for two years and never taking it out of the box, I actually let go of it. Uh, one of my good personal friends that I actually bought the Life Racing ECU from, he works on nothing but the craziest, most badass stuff and is without a doubt the smartest person I know. Uh, he made a joke one time that was sort of a joke, sort of not, but he says millionaires use Motec, billionaires use Life Racing. It's pretty funny, but uh, he legitimately works on billionaire's cars and, and this is what every one of them gets. Uh, with all of that being said, these are not very popular for me, so we're gonna get rid of these two. come to, we'll pair these together and do these next. These ones make the least amount of sense being up here. So basically Honda out, up, rev, et cetera, that's gonna be all your just factory ECU stuff, very application specific. Uh, so these make sense, you know, when you're working on that application, but otherwise not here. HP tuners, if I simply just wanted to make money and I didn't care about anything else, I would totally ignore all of this and spend every minute of every day right here. If there was enough hours in the day and you were proficient enough at it and you had experience with all the different models, you could probably do 5,000 HP tuner cars a day. I just don't, I don't care for it. I do it, we use a lot of it because you sort of have to, but it's just not nearly as enjoyable or as, or as fun as any of these other systems. I like the tinkering aspect of cars. I like experimenting and it's like a science project really. And, and all of these give me way more stuff to tinker with and play with. And this just kind of like, and eh. the other thing to take into consideration with HP tuners is, hold on, I don't wanna say it. So if and when these guys decide to get involved, this is gonna be the first thing to go away. So I use it, it's here all the time. We're gonna take it down off of here because this isn't really the conversation at the moment. So up next we have uh, these two. Uh, was it Max ECU, ECU Masters? I think these are relatively new, or at least I didn't really start getting any inquiries about these until here recently. I don't even remember. One of these two advertises like crazy and it pops up on all my online crap. And their big like claim to fame is we offer blah, 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 cheaper than anybody else. That marketing strategy to me is a little bit off-putting. I do get calls for these occasionally. I don't do a lot with them yet, but I think they offer some plug and play options. So they'll probably become more popular, but these also seem to be uh, predominantly in the import side of things. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything from these guys on the domestic side. So this stuff might come back around later, but as of right now, we're gonna get rid of it. AM. I advise y'all not to mess with it. Or... <laughs> so even when things are going right, tuning is nothing but troubleshooting. You know, my air fuel is this, I want it to be this, what do I need to do or change in order to make that happen? Or maybe I turn the boost up, the ECU targeted the boost that I wanted, but it didn't actually go up, so maybe there's a mechanical problem. There's enough crap going on with those two things to be enough. And when you use AEM, there's a third element of like, did the ECU freak out? Did the ECU take a dump? Did the ECU do this, that, the other? I don't have the patience for it. I can't deal with it. So I do a little bit of it again, cause you have to. And sometimes I like just helping people out and, and whatnot. So, but as far as like a support or do I recommend anybody use it? Uh, no. 
Let's get rid of AM2. I've never actually used Pro EFI. Uh, it seems some people like it, but it seems to be more of a, uh, like a plug and play application specific type of thing. Not popular here for me, so we're gonna get rid of it. Link, it seems to be a very powerful ECU. Logging seems to be pretty good. It seems to have a ton of adjustability, a ton of features. It definitely seems to be more popular on the import side of things. It's very, again, application specific. Like I think they have a Toyota MR2 plug and play unit. It seems to be pretty popular. A lot of people that I know that use it really like it. I haven't really heard any negative complaints about it, but again, I just don't see a lot of it here. If you try and tell somebody with a Fox body Mustang to put a Link ECU in their car, they're probably gonna look at you like you have two heads. I have a feeling this is gonna make it back in here in some different applications, but again, for my day-to-day, -day, uh, this isn't really part of that equation. These two kind of fall into the same category. I uh, tune these from time to time, but I can't, I can't really like offer support for these or suggest that somebody buys them. This for like the 302 Fox body guys is pretty popular. I think Miatas and stuff use these quite a bit. Microskirt. I think I only know of one person using this and I looked it up this morning just for the hell of it. I had no idea that this is three, $300. $300, that's hard to believe. I almost make, want to get one to use it to control my microwave or something. Dirty don't have a lot of money. Haltech has been around forever. People seem to either love or hate Haltech. You don't really find too many people that are in the middle on it. Talking to several people that do like super legit multi-thousand horsepower nitrous cars, they all seem to struggle with getting it to do the same thing twice. Over on the import side of things, I know a lot of people that swear by it and it's all that they want to use. There for a while we were doing an application, I think it, maybe it was Honda S2000s where it was either AEM or Haltech were the two plug and play options. Everybody at that point was familiar with AEM for whatever reason and nobody would really roll with Haltech. So I, I tried to push it, but everyone wanted AEM, and I think I described how I feel about AEM. So I would definitely take the Haltech over the AEM, but again, I don't get a lot of it through the door. So for the sake of this conversation, deleted. So now we're getting into what I specifically get asked every day, which is should I do Fuel Tech or Holly? And I'm gonna explain why Holly was the direction that I choose to go. I guess worth noting, I would say anything that was in, even though I've gotten rid of them, anything that was in this kind of row here, or all seem to be very capable ECUs. It's just gonna be a matter of what you're more comfortable with. And you know, you'll be fine with any of them, but these are without a doubt, the most popular things that I get asked about, the most popular things that come through the door. So let's go over why I decided to go this direction. All right, I'm gonna start off by saying I am a fuel tech dealer. I don't really sell much of it. I am actually not set up as a Holly dealer directly. I just don't really have any interest. Anytime there's a sale going on, Holly tends to undercut their dealers. And if you go into like any Facebook group or anything, it's basically all the dealers just trying to undercut one another. I don't have any interest in playing that game. I don't have time for it. We, we just do more Holly than fuel tech. Calling Holly for any type of technical support can be a little bit of a disaster. I think a lot of it has to do with this system, probably a little bit of this system. I almost wish they had a dedicated line for the HPs and the dominators. And once you do get a hold of somebody, I think they have so many technical support guys. You know, you'll hear guys like basically trying to read the manual and stuff uh, while you're on the phone with them. So not really a lot of help here. Luckily, there's a lot of other ways to get technical support for the Holly stuff. And again, just calling them directly sort of sucks. Fuel tech, on the other hand, if you ever have any sort of a question with fuel tech, the tech support is awesome. The ongoing joke with that though, is that their tech support is really good because it has to be because there's so many problems and glitches within the system. One very off-putting thing for fuel tech with me is it seems to have a lot of crank trigger issues, especially on the 24 tooth stuff. If you've ever dealt with a car with crank trigger issues before, it is without a doubt the most frustrating thing you'll ever deal with. So that is always on the back of my mind when dealing with the fuel tech stuff. With our mainline Pro Hub Dyno, I do rent it out a lot. I have far more cars come in with fuel tech that other people are tuning in than ones that I'm doing myself. And I think every single car that has come through the door has actually required a phone call to fuel tech and not from like a, a tuning standpoint of somebody having a question on like, how does this work? But it's, this is doing this, it's not supposed to be doing that. In some instances, there's been no solution. It's just been kind of like, uh, we'll figure it out later. Other instances, fuel tech has actually had to log in directly to the car, make changes. There's been firmware updates done on the dyno. There's been software updates done on the dyno. So they're very awesome about figuring out and helping you through whatever issue you're having, but I haven't necessarily seen the same problems with Holly. 
Now I did leave Motec up here on purpose. You'll never hear a complaint about Motec other than maybe the price. And even though these are what come through my doors all the time, I still, you know, wouldn't be opposed to doing a lot more Motec stuff. Just, I accepted a long time ago when I had Motec that the area that I'm in and the customers that are in this area, it, it's a very difficult sell. You can only do so many estimates where people basically pass out and hit their head on the floor when you give it to them. <laughs> and again, I don't necessarily think it's that expensive, but when you're comparing it to this, it is. Now, one thing that I have found that is a little bit interesting between this and this is anytime somebody wants a quote on a Dominator, they want a quote for an ECU and a harness, and they want to just put it in the car and they want it to work. On the other hand, anytime I've had anybody ask to do a quote on fuel tech, they want everything. They want every different box, every different expander, every different this, that, the other, and it ends up being a $12,000 quote, which they ever never end up pulling the trigger on as to where the Dominator, you know, in base configuration is significantly cheaper but it's not a fair comparison and I think people are like setting themselves up with failure a little bit. So I don't know what it is about fuel tech that's making people feel the need to have every single item in their whole damn catalog, but they should probably work on that because I think that ends up making this a more popular option than this just from that alone. Now another thing that is interesting between these two and this is that the guys that will buy these will buy a $75,000 motor. They'll bazooka the crank out of the side of it eight times per season not flinch about the money spent, but for whatever reason, this, this is where they draw the line. Like they did, they can't justify spending this money. And then you also see a guy that maybe either buy one of these and then they'll buy a Davis traction control system. And then they'll buy an AMS 2000 and just those two boxes by themselves are more expensive than this. And then you add this into the equation. Mathematically, it, it doesn't add up. Now I do think in all fairness, a lot of that is on the domestic side of things as you can find 5,000 people, willing to tune either one of these ECUs for every one person that's using Motec. Now you can go back and forth on these two as far as which one's better all day long. This one comes with the display. This one comes with a built-in lambda meter. Uh, this one has an endless amount of inputs and outputs. This one's a little more limited in that sense. The display on the fuel tech stuff is a little bit too small for most people to see. And a lot of people actually really like the display options that Holly has to offer. Obviously there's an additional cost associated with that. This one does have power management included. This one is a $500 upgrade. I think really at the end of the day, these two are gonna be very comparable. It's just gonna come down to what you want. More importantly, who you're gonna to get to help you with the, the support after the sale type of thing. If your tuner uses fuel tech, then use fuel tech. If your tuner uses Dominator, then use that. Um, if they're familiar with both of them, there's a conversation between you and whoever's helping you out that I think you need to have. But at the end of the day, they're really going to both do the same thing. It's funny when you hear the arguments of, you know, so-and-so went faster with this than he did with this and blah, 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 blah. You can make either one of these do basically the same thing. Uh, you're just going to maybe come down in a different, different ways of doing it. They're both very, very capable. Uh, some people seem to think that the fuel tech software is easier. Other people think that they, the Holly software is easier. Uh, I think basically everybody seems to think that the fuel tech logging is a little bit better, but I've also really heard complaints there too. Um, I've done way more Holly than fuel tech, so I'm not really the one in the position to tell you which, which one I prefer. Well, I guess I am because the whole rest of this is going to be why I prefer Holly over fuel tech, but it's not from using both and making the comparison there. It's just that 99 out of 100 times I'm contacted about something, it's Holly. But let me explain why I decided to go this direction. The primary thing I like about this is there's so much of it. I tend to spend all day every day on the dyno and there's just an endless amount of cars with this. So I just have an endless flow of cars coming through the door. So naturally that makes sense. The other thing that I really like about this is it sells itself. Everybody is familiar with Holly. You know, you can find an 80 year old guy that has an old pickup truck or whatever. And if you mention Holly, he's gonna be on board as to where some of these other options, you know, he won't have any idea what you're even talking about. And then once we get past that, we have the Sniper, we have the Terminator X, and we have the HP and the Dominator. From a software standpoint, if you know how to tune one, you know how to tune all of them, which is great. Uh, if you get into doing too many ECUs, you just, you can, everything can kind of start blending together. You kind of, you don't know all the hotkeys. You know 10% of 10 different things as opposed to knowing 100% of one thing. And I think there's a lot of good for both yourself and for the customer when you get really familiar with one system. You know, I can't really remember too much of this shit. 
And once we get past that, we have something for every scenario and every budget. Uh, you know, the guys that are switching over from carburetors to EFI for the first time, they love the sniper stuff. Uh, you got the streetcar guy that just did a swap, doesn't want to use a factory ECU, he's on a budget, just absolutely will cover what he needs it to do. And if you have uh, legitimately a pro mod, this will work just fine for that. And even the guy on this budget can upgrade to this. So if we basically tie all of that stuff together from being familiar with the Holly stuff and having people refer people to me, uh, the flexibility and the functionality of the Dominator, and then also the popularity of it for it, you know, everyone to be familiar with it, for it to end up in that particular project. I've actually tuned a Dominator ECU on an airboat for the federal government. Government is out to assassinate me. Over the summer, I actually went to Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, the NASCAR facility, and spent 60 hours welding titanium. And even there, uh, you know, those cars had sniper systems on them. At least from the throttle body perspective, uh, I didn't really get a clear answer on the electronics, but everything said Holly EFI all over everything. So, you know, we got, we got NASCAR, we got pro mods, we got boats, we got street cars. Uh, this family of ECUs just covers everything that I need it to do. And I can get familiar with one software set and it, and it covers all of it. So it just kind of makes sense to me. I think another huge key to Holly's success is that they offer engine harnesses for a lot of different applications. And yes, fuel tech does the same, but they're far more expensive. They're far more like universal. The Holly ones are actually very crude. They're pretty ugly. Sometimes they even have problems, but it is in fact an option for a small amount of money. Nobody wants to take their car to a shop and have it wired. Nobody wants to wait for the wiring guy to take, take his time to build a custom harness. So you can simply make a phone call, a box shows up, you can plug it in. And that's just a huge selling point for the Holly stuff. Another giant selling point for Holly, especially with these two systems, is the guys that are getting an EFI for the first time, they literally don't know anything about it. They're able to actually go through the wizard and you can get both of these systems up and running. The fact that somebody can install an EFI system for the first time and actually get the car started and running, maybe not like racetrack ready running, but up and running, make sure everything works before they have to take it to a shop to spend thousands of dollars just troubleshooting to figure out what they did wrong. The fact that they can get this started before they get to that point is another really big selling point for them, I think. We're gonna circle back to the customer support and I had mentioned how I think that these two are having negative effects on the, the support for this one. So ultimately the selling feature for these, having first time users and with the price tag associated with it, maybe ending up in not the most ideal cars, it's causing support problems as to where fuel tech support is top notch. So it's a little bit of a give and a take there. So I think that maybe these taking support away from this would cause this to lose sales from this. But from a numbers perspective, these are going to sell thousands and thousands of percent more than these two would, I would imagine. At least it sure seems that way. This is kind of what's left up here. I do tons and tons of Holly stuff. Some of the HP tuner and some of the application specific stuff's never going to go away. I imagine fuel tech's going to get a little bit more popular through here, especially I have a few projects that are underway that uh, are planning on coming here once, once they're finished up with fuel tech. And I still think that Motec is the top level here. Uh, I've had good luck with the Motec stuff in the past. Uh, if it was up to me, you know, it's kind of like being a Lamborghini shop really uh, with the Motec stuff is it's, it's the top level. Uh, it's kind of like where everyone would like to be. There's actually good money to be made on the parts sales side of it. The dealers aren't all undercutting each other like they are on this side of it. You know, everybody's pretty much going to pay the same price. A buddy of mine charges $5,000 per car to tune Motec, which sounds crazy, but you got to keep in mind that he's probably spending, you know, 10 times the amount of time as you would on one of these. Endless amounts of sensors, all kinds of different stuff to set up. So as to where with these systems, you might tune 10 times more. At least here you get to do a really, really good job with just one system, which I think would be really enjoyable as to where, uh, especially like on this side of things, these guys very bare bones. They just want to get the thing up and running. You know, they don't care about adding $146,000 in pressure sensors and tire temperature sensors and butthole pressure sensors and everything else. So two totally different ball games. Uh, this from an interest standpoint interests me a lot. Who knows, maybe if I put together another car for myself, depending on what it is, or maybe if it's something with an LS motor in it or something domestic, probably would go this, this route. Uh, but who knows, maybe if I splurge one of these days and buy myself something nice, then maybe we'll go this route. But that's gonna do it for this video. 
Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of you that don't agree with a damn word I've said this whole time. So if that's the case, comment below. Let me know uh, why you're right and I'm wrong. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.